What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash just no family. Alrighty, this story is called, Tonight I, 19 female, had to rescue my 5 year old brother from our 45 year old mother who's on a bender. Tomorrow is the intervention, rehab, or CPS, I'm realizing how mentally ill she is, I'm realizing I've been severely emotionally abused. And there's some trigger warnings of addiction, emotional, abuse and neglect. Alright, so here's the cast, um, voices to be determined based on presence or lack of presence of dialogue. So there's little brother, he's a 5 year old half brother, there's my brother, 14 year old full brother, my dad, and little brother's dad. I don't know where the start to this story truly is, so I'll try my best to make this all flow easily. Apologies in advance, I am on mobile. It's 3am and I'm squished between little brother and my boyfriend, 21, in our 500 square foot apartment. The virus has laid us both off, leaving us with enough time and energy to become temporary parents to little brother. This is the first bed he slept in in weeks. I've always known mom was mentally ill, and I've always known she's had a problem with opiates, but she's told me it's just depression and anxiety, and she's told me that she's weaning off the meds. Neither are true. I believe mom is autistic and borderline. And tonight, I found out she's mixing alcohol, any benzo she can find, and suboxo daily. My brother has split custody between mom and dad. But lately, he's been avoiding moms and getting aggressive when we ask him to go. He came clean and told us she's been passing out on the floor, the toilet, the backyard. That she speaks in incoherent sentences, screams, and emotionally abuses him. That little brother has no structure and is constantly awake at all hours of the night. My boyfriend and I went over today to investigate. When we got there, we spent 30 minutes looking for her, only to find her passed out on the toilet. We got her up and tried to talk to her, but no coherent sentences came out. She reeked of booze, couldn't walk without bumping into something, lit a cigarette on the gas stove and nearly fell into the flames. Chain smoked for an hour inside. Little brother has asthma. She used the toilet and didn't wipe or flush, and finally passed out in a chair face down in a sink. I convinced her to let me take little brother under the guise of a brother-sister sleepover. I beeline to my dad's. After a long conversation, we decided it would be best to involve mom's parents and give her the ultimatum of rehab or CPS. Little brother's dad is a heroin user and beat mom when they were married. So we tried to keep stays with him minimal. Only other adults in little brother's family are 19 year old college student me and his three various grandparents, all in their 70s with various health issues. We really don't want to put him in the foster system as he probably wouldn't end up with any of the stable adults in his family due to age or health. So we're praying she takes the rehab and little brother can informally stay with me or the grandparents. I took little brother home and am distraught at his state. He barely knows how to dress himself. His clothes are filthy. My boyfriend taught him how to brush his teeth for the first time today and little brother complained about how the toothpaste tingled. We bought child's toothpaste. He's never experienced toothpaste. He used the restroom and tried to walk out without wiping or flushing or washing his hands. And I had to explain why we need to wipe and flush and wash our hands. Little brother told me him and mom had been sleeping on the couch because it's hard for mom to get into bed and he's scared of being alone. This is neglect. This is not mom. I miss mom. Mom was amazing when I was young, lost her way a bit after my brother was born due to the economic crash, and fell completely down when little brother was born due to the abusive marriage. I'm beginning to realize how far gone mom really is, and how she's nowhere near the person I remember her to be as a child. I feel a tremendous amount of guilt, because in hindsight, I should have known that mom's been using since I was 14, and I should have known that I was being abused. And I should have known not to have moved out before making sure my brothers wouldn't face the same fate. 
and I didn't do that. I'm coming clean about all of it now to my family. Mom always told me that my dad and grandma were trying to use us for tax money, that they lie about her and to never believe them, that they don't love us unconditionally. Starting when I was 14, mom would nod off and get mad when I woke her up. Mom never had the energy for housework, so she made me do it, yelled when I didn't, made up for it by letting me bring grown men into the house and sleep with them. No rules meant I wanted to stay. My dad had rules. Why would I go there? From the day I got a car, I began picking my brothers up from school every day, even when mom didn't work. Mom went three years without grocery shopping or running errands. Because I did. Because if I didn't, I would get yelled at. I watched little brother so much that he still calls me mommy and doesn't understand why mommy moves away. Mom shattered my phone my dad bought me when I was 17. When I told her I was graduating early, she flipped over and broke every piece of furniture in my room because she knew she was losing her maid. And I never told anyone any of this because I didn't want to lose her, because I thought I deserved it all. I'm slowly building trust with my dad and my grandma, but years of indoctrination takes time to undo. They're going to be heartbroken as I come clean about all this abuse, but I'm realizing that these stories are important for understanding why mom is unsafe for little brother and my brother. It's such a painful realization to learn that the person I thought loved me the most hurt me so badly. And it's such a painful realization that she may be too mentally incapable to realize what she's doing. I'll update you guys tomorrow on how the intervention goes, but I gotta get some sleep so I can mom it up tomorrow. Any kind words would be appreciated. Sorry for the word vomit, this all just kinda came out. For those concerned about CPS, I'm copying another comment I made here. My reasoning for not wanting to get CPS involved is because in my state, I wouldn't be allowed custody solely because of my age. My boyfriend and I both had high paying jobs before the virus and some pretty hefty savings. We could have a biological child without drastically changing our standard of living. So as of now, we have the time and money to properly care for little brother. My brother is with my dad, our dad. I understand why CPS would need to get involved in any situation similar to this, but I feel wrong placing a child into foster care who calls me mommy that I can completely support right now. Edit 2. I know everyone has their own opinions on whether or not CPS is a good route for this or any situation, and I know personal biases and experiences influence people's opinions. I've gotten lots of messages saying call CPS right now and others begging me not to. This ultimatum is an ultimatum for a reason. If mom chooses not to go to rehab or returns from rehab and is still neglectful and using, we will involve CPS. We are just trying to avoid this option at all costs as it escalates the entire situation drastically and we want to give mom one final chance to decide to get help. We are not against involving CPS, we just want to exhaust all other options first. Update! We had the intervention. It went over shockingly well. I believe this is mom's rock bottom. She was actually taking accountability for her actions. After looking at some local laws, we realized inpatient rehab may not be the best idea, as little brother's dad would automatically gain full temporary custody of little brother. Little brother's dad is not a safe person, but we don't have enough concrete evidence for a CPS report. She's committed to little brother and her living with my grandma for 30 days, while completing a 7 day a week intensive outpatient program. They'd stay longer if need be, but thankfully, I won't be needing to parent little brother for longer than tonight. Thank you all for all the positive comments. I'm very hopeful. Okay, so that had a very, very nice ending. And as much as we'd love to crap on the mother for being neglectful and all that jazz, not just neglectful, straight up abusive. And while it's easy to say this being an outsider, we gotta keep in mind that the mother was a victim as well. As OP said, the mom used to be really good and cool and all that jazz until her ex-husband screwed her up in more than one sense. So I think it's necessary that we appreciate and congratulate that she's going to accept the help necessary to be the mother that she needs to be. And also, Redditor OP, writer of this post, 
You saint, you strong person, you person that is caring. Uh, good on you for trying your damnedest to make sure that your siblings are taken care of, or at least have a decent life. While you may feel guilty for your perceived inaction, you gotta keep in mind that the mother is the one supposed that's supposed to take care of you and your siblings. Not the other way around. And also, it's hard for kids to call their parents out on stuff like that. While it's absolutely normal and every kid gets annoyed when they're treated unfairly by their parents, but you don't ever realize when it's gone too far. Because that is your normal. What do you compare it to? I mean, you said that she was nicer when you were a kid, but aren't most parents? <clears throat> Anyways, you just gotta appreciate the initiative taken by Miss Reddit or OP person here. Especially at such a young age. Hope everything's a little bit better by now. It's two weeks old when I'm reading this. All right, this story's called, You're Going on Vacation? Take My Kids With You. My boyfriend's cousin, his paternal uncle's daughter, has four children. Each of her kids is the personification of the word bratty. The said cousin refuses to discipline them and constantly makes excuses for their behavior. She's also very judgmental of our decision to not have children. She has often made some snide comments towards me, implying that I'm the selfish cooter who is depriving my boyfriend of the joys of raising children. For these reasons, and for her generally entitled behavior, my boyfriend had cut ties with her. However, when he and I visited his paternal home three days ago for his parents' anniversary celebration, we ran into her again. My boyfriend's dad had urged him to use this occasion to mend bridges with the cousin, so we both tried to make nice and engaged in small talk with her. During our conversation, boyfriend mentioned that we were leaving for Melbourne for vacation in a few days. At this, cousin's eyes lit up. Oh, that sounds like so much fun, she said. My husband and I haven't gone anywhere since our honeymoon. She whines some more about how hard it is for them with four kids. If only they could afford such luxuries, etc., etc. I could tell where this was going. My boyfriend probably felt sorry for her and, being the kind and generous soul that he is, offered to buy them a weekend in a resort in Mount Abu, a hill station in the Indian state of Rajasthan. Cousin face scrunched up. That's nice, but why can't you just take us to Melbourne with you? Boyfriend getting a bit annoyed but still patient. Well, uh, we want to spend some time alone together. Plus, we'll be meeting some close friends there. Besides, Mount Abu is a beautiful place. Your kids will love it. In the annoying Karen tone, she responds, I still don't see why you can't take us to Australia. You're being so selfish, going on this great trip and sticking your family with a cheap weekend getaway. Boyfriend's mom says, cousin's name. He's making a very generous offer. Either take it or leave it. Wearing an expression that morons wear when they think they've had a bright idea. Oh, I know. Why don't my husband and I go to Mount Abu and you take our kids to Melbourne? What? It's a great idea. The kids can have fun in Melbourne with you too and my hobby and I can enjoy a peaceful weekend. This way the kids can actually spend some time with their uncle. You never make time for them. I'm offering for the last time. It's either the weekend in Mount Abu or nothing at all. And why the hell would we ruin our vacation taking care of your kids? How can you say that? My kids are so well behaved. You'll have so much fun spending time with them. Besides, my husband and I could really use some quiet time together. You and OP don't have any responsibilities. You have no idea how hard it is to raise four kids. You can afford this trip. I don't see why you won't share with the family. One more word and you're losing my Mount Abu offer. On hearing this, the cousin shuts the front door. We all had dinner together and she was mercifully quiet. If only her kids had followed her example. You'd think this would be the end of it, but no! <laughs> we had seriously underestimated her dedication to Karenness. On the morning of the day of our departure, cousin showed up at my apartment with the kids in tow. I was shocked to see her, of course, and asked if something was wrong. She smiled and said, I'm just here to drop the kids off. You're leaving tonight, right? After taking a second to recover from the shock, I asked, Did you fall and hit your head on something? We told you we weren't taking your kids with us. 
What part of that did you not understand? She then tried to convince me that my boyfriend had called her later on and had agreed to take her kids. I knew this was bullcrap and called it as such. Cousin became enraged and asked if I was going to break her kid's heart, why would I break our promise and how boyfriend and I could be so cold. I called my boyfriend and after telling him what was going on, I turned on the speaker. My boyfriend proceeded to chew her out brutally, right in front of her kids, telling her that he would no longer pay for the weekend getaway and that is exactly the kind of behavior that had made him cut ties with her. She tried to get a word in, but he wouldn't let her. Cousin took her kids and stormed off. Boyfriend and I are having a laugh over this and are still wondering, what made her think this plan would ever work? Honestly, this should be in Choosing Beggars too. This is... <laughs> that's some grade A Karen behavior right there. Also entitled parents. Wow, this... <laughs> this story is really checking all the boxes, huh? I was honestly kind of hoping we'd at least get one. I don't work here, lady. Just, you know, just so we really get all those subreddits in there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.